Oh, hey everybody, Shane back with you from Guitar at Work. Welcome back. Um, this is, we're here to talk about basic finger picking variations. So many of us learn finger picking sort of in a song specific way. We learn a song that has finger picking in it or that is finger picked and we kind of stick with it. Treat it almost like a classical piece. Well, I'm here to tell you with, I'm going to give, we'll do four different patterns on three different, on three different chords and that should take you a very long way. And you might find that a lot of the songs you're trying to learn to finger pick are very much based on these patterns. It's gonna rely on something called alternating bass, which is your thumb going back and forth. You may have some experience on that. We'll slow it all down. And, uh, but I wanna thank you for coming back. Again, Shane here from Guitar at Work. Your thumbs up have met the world. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and all that other happy YouTube stuff. And I've appreciated your questions and comments. They really, uh, really meant a lot to hear some, some from so many of you. I do appreciate it very much. Um, hey, and I'll send you as always to patreon.com slash guitar at work to grab a worksheet here. All your finger picking patterns we'll be talking about are on this and it'll be very helpful to have that. We've got uh, four different patterns on three different chords. It's kind of four different chords. You'll see what I mean when we get there. And uh, anyway, Patreon, uh, very helpful. So many of you are jumping in. I appreciate that. And it doesn't have to be a lifelong commitment. There's a ton of songs up there. I've forgotten how many. I'm going to count them. I'll try and do that for next time. Tons of songs you can play along with and uh, just keep, keep right on going in your guitar journey. So I'm going to start with, uh, here, let me play a couple of these guys here. here uh, on a regular G chord, it doesn't matter what G chord you're playing. If you're playing this G chord, you're playing this G chord, or some other variation that you've picked up, it doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. This is all about the right hand. And I want to tell you that your right hand, I know some of us are left-handed, okay, but you're going to have to, it's a right-handed world, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to make the switch, okay? This is uh, not meaning you're going to have to translate. Don't don't switch your guitar around. That's not what I mean. Uh, well, I'll talk about right hand and fret, uh, picking hand. Left hand is fretting hand, okay? So just norm, right hand. Thumb, it's gonna do this. Your thumb typically plays the lowest three strings. Boom, boom, boom. It's typically responsible for the low E, the A, and the D strings. There are lots of exceptions to that, but in this case, in this tradition, that is generally the case. So thumb, thumb, thumb. And then your first finger is usually the G string. Your second finger is the B string. Your third finger is the high E. Again, exceptions to that. And we have one of those exceptions coming here to date. Um, but that gives you what I'll call in, in typing, if you learn to type the way I do, there's something called a home row, where you place your you place your hands on the keyboard and you know exactly what letters are underneath your fingers. If you just if you treat that like a home row kind of situation, you can feel the variations, okay? Because you have your common stance and you feel variations as they occur. It's not just willy nilly, in other words, it's not just willy nilly. And um, so let me play a few of those. The first one is this guy. I'll go through them slowly in a second. That's your first pattern. Second pattern is this guy. I call this a cluster pluck. Three strings together. And displacement number one, this is your third one. Go to the high string. Go through that slowly in just a sec. And the last one, displacement number two, is this guy. That high string is a little bit of a sparkle to it, a eh? nice little sparkle to it. And we'll do the same, that's a G, we'll do the same thing on C and D. G, C and D, three of your most uh, essential chords for sure. But not only that, that covers your three basic string sets, I'll call it. A G chord uses all six strings. A C chord typically uses five, okay? A basic C chord uses five strings. We don't use the low E typically. And a D chord has two X's in it, so we start it on the D string. So those are your three basic string sets. Again, exceptions abound, but not here today. Um, so let's get going on. Here is basic pattern number one. Jump in here with a nice close-up for you, and I'm going to go thumb on your sheet. Stems, lines going down underneath the dot mean your thumb. That's huge. Um, I wish it was that in, in professional books and things like that, that sometimes it usually is the case, but watch out on the internet, it's willy-nilly. Um, in proper finger-picking notation, if a thumb is going down, that's your thumb, okay? Sorry, if a line is going down, that's your thumb. So on this piece of paper, you've got your thumb first, and then your second finger is playing the B string. You'll see that marked to the two there. And your thumb's coming to here, the D string. And then the fourth note is your first finger underneath the G string. That's the, those are your only four notes, the rest is repeat. So let me do that slowly again. Thumb, two, thumb, one. Now you might, it's a good idea, stop tape right there. Just sit there and go, okay, what's that thumb, two? Don't be ashamed if you have to look, okay? You have to look until you don't have to look anymore, okay? You're just, again, if your posture is bang on, um, this, we're all different heights and different size guitars, you know? And um, But as a general rule, as a general rule, I like to tell people, like, rest just below your forearm right here. Then your hand kind of dangles. Um, I see a lot of, if you're on your bicep like that, you're having to hold up your arm while you're finger picking. So you're tempted maybe to rest your pinky like that. And that can cripple up your ring finger. So now I say all that, but some of my favorite guitar players in the world play just the opposite of what I do. So it really depends on how you, 
I, I wouldn't say how you grab a guitar is the way you should play it. I mean, if, I think you should work to some sort of orthodox technique uh, so you can, you can make a, an educated decision to say, okay, I can't do it this way and try something else. So that is this, thumb, two, thumb, one. It happens twice in the bar. That's pattern number one. Um, pattern number two on the G is a cluster. So we've got this, you got a thumb, thumb has come to there again, but we also include the first and second fingers. And you get a, a, that cluster pluck. That is three strings at the same time. So bass, then your cluster, and then same as the last bar, you go thumb, two, thumb, one. So that is this. Bass, cluster, thumb, two, thumb, one. There we go. That's pattern number two. Again, I'd urge you to stop tape there. And uh, you don't have to go through all these in one sitting. Just sit there in front of a movie. Okay. Okay. Now the funny thing, if finger picking is new to you, we are so involved when we're learning we're so involved with every note. Okay. Ba, boo, ba. And you're going, well, it doesn't sound like music. It just sounds like individual notes. You almost have to, you have to achieve a certain speed before you, as the player, experience the blur that is that whole. Where you stop tracking every single note, which can drive you crazy. But unfortunately, it seems to me, uh, when you're first starting it, you have to go through that until you can, oh, okay, there it is, okay. Uh, so we have pattern one, pattern two. Now pattern three, I'll call this displacement number one. I've got it here in my trusty iPod. Again, I, I, iPad, I urge you to go to patreon.com slash guitar at work and grab this sheet as well as many others. And the, the displacement number one is this. I'm gonna go thumb, two, thumb, one. You've done that before. Now the second half of bar three is thumb, ring finger, ring finger on your right hand. You'll see a three written there. That's your ring finger. So thumb, two, thumb, one and then thumb, third finger, and then thumb, one. Slowly again, number three. Bass, thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb, three on the high string, and then thumb, one. I really like that because that, um, that slight variation, it kind of blurs the bar line. Finger picking, if you just do the same pattern, like, you can, pick up on a pattern there like you, the listener is going to clearly hey that sounds like a pattern until something comes in like a vocal or something that that disturbs the pattern um, or, or puts it in the background but when you put that high note in there in variation number one there a little bit of sparkle uh, it, it, it sort of blurs that bar line as I say the last one number four now we'll move on to a different chord you're getting thumb sparkle here on the high string is right away so thumb third thumb first Okay, again, top of number four here. Thumb, pink, ring finger, thumb, one. And the second half is, as always, thumb, two, thumb, one. So you see, it's very much based on that thumb, two, thumb, one, which is why it's so important to get our first pattern down, um, sit in front of a movie, and just drive yourself crazy. You know, you don't even have to play a chord. You can just sit there and go... Like that, if you have to be quiet or something like that. Uh, so again, uh, all four back to back here. Number one is this: your basic thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb, one. The second one is thumb cluster, thumb, two, thumb, one. And again, thumb cluster, thumb, two, thumb, one. The third one, which I'm calling displacement number one, is thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb, three. High string, thumb, one. Here's that one again. Third one, thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb, ring finger, thumb, one. Okay, last one is thumb, ring, thumb, one. Second half, thumb, two, thumb, one. I blew it there, white thumb, ring, thumb, one, thumb, two, thumb, one. There we go. So what to do with that? Um, Again, I would definitely stop tape there before you move on to different chords. I think I would sit and, there's number one. I need to freely be able to go from that guy to, okay. Be able to pull the trigger on all of them, okay? All of them, just be able to, there's no right or wrong way uh, to mix them up. You could, geez, you, and there's, there's more variation than I've written there. If you can come up with a way to, to copy and paste stuff together like that, uh, good on you. 
Um, I'll run to a C shape now. Now all that has to happen on the C, because of this pesky low E string, which is out of bounds on the C, on a basic C anyway, um, we have to we have to now bring your thumb. What was played on the low E is now played on the A string. So, but your fingers will do the same thing. So our first pattern, our bass going to C, thumb two, thumb one. Okay, that goes twice. Thumb two, thumb one. And the finger picking is very new to you. You might be getting a little of this. Ah, what dead spots? Which maybe you didn't hear when you're strumming because there's other things going on, right? Um, but certainly finger picking will expose any little blemishes you've got in the chord. And I'd encourage you to keep your nails short on this hand and stand up nice and tall. If your thumb is over like that and you're getting some buzzes, the first step would be try to get that thumb down like that. That stands up your fingers. When your thumb is over, your fingers pull over like that. And uh, it can be a good thing to have your thumb over to mute the low E string, definitely. But you have to kind of earn that. And I'd suggest you keep your thumb nice and low. It's right behind my middle finger. Uh, where he's on the neck there. So that was matter number one on the C. Thumb two, thumb one, thumb two, thumb one. The second pattern, the cluster, is much the same. Thumb, cluster, and then thumb two, thumb one. Let's do that again. Thumb, cluster, thumb two, thumb one. The third pattern on C is thumb two, thumb one, and here comes your displacement, thumb three. That's on your high E string, right? Use that third pattern on C again. Thumb two, thumb one, thumb three, thumb one. And finally on the C, you're getting thumb ring, thumb one, thumb two, thumb one. I know that's flying by if you're just watching it, so again, I'd encourage you to get that sheet, okay? Thumb, here's all four back to back on C. I'll do them twice each. Cluster. Number three. Number four. Last one. We've got G, we've got C, so hopefully, um, but hopefully your right hand is saying, okay, but if I know G, I pretty much know C, it's just that anything that was happening on the low E string now has to go down to the A string, right? So your right hand, is, C should be f feeling familiar if you've spent enough time on G, which is why I encourage you to stop tape here and there and really um, try to get that down. Now D presents a bit of a problem. D because uh, we've got two X's in a standard D chord. I'm going to address this a couple of different ways. Um, I'm going to move the whole system down toward the floor. I'm going to move right hand. Everything in the right hand is going to go one string thinner. So my thumb is now going to handle the D and the G and my first finger and second finger are going to handle the B and the high E. So again that would be thumb, thumb, first, second. Okay and we're running out of strings. That's all we got. So with that, your thumb's gonna alternate between the, the uh, D string and the G string. So the first pattern is this, thumb, two, high string, thumb, one. It's the same thing, but everything is down one string thinner. I hope, this, I hope you're seeing that so it doesn't feel brand new. Here's thumb, whoops, thumb, two, thumb, one. That's your first pattern. And here's your cluster. Okay, so again, bass, cluster, and then thumb, two, thumb, one. Okay, so bass, cluster, thumb, two, thumb, one. That's your D chord. Now, uh, you'll see a, a blank spot on your sheet, and it says C below. Now, we don't, we can't do the high string variation on this because we're out of strings. We've already occupied that high E string. So we do the opposite. We go to the low end of things. Um, don't throw your back out trying this. Uh, some of us, uh, especially if you're playing on a nylon string, you have a wider neck, watch out for that. Um, I'm gonna take a D chord and I'm gonna put my thumb over here on the second fret of the low E string. I'm gonna use my thumb as if it's a, a, a fifth finger. So D with a thumb over top. And you might, get, you might get some dead spots until you can really dig in there. I'm also gonna take my middle finger off, middle finger off of the chord. And that'll make it easier. You might find it gets a little easier there to get him on there. It doesn't have to be pretty, whichever way he's angled, whichever way my, my tendency is to, the na my thumbnail seems to go toward the body of the guitar. That seems to help me out. I got good long fingers. Um, don't be discouraged if you get a dead spot there. Uh, work through it. Just keep on playing. That's the last line you're seeing. Now, now, basically your D gets the same treatment as a G. There's no X's now. 
Same treatment as a Jeep, there's no excess. Yes, that's handy. Plus you get this nice juicy bass note. Officially it's called a D slash F sharp. When we remove that middle finger, it's called D add nine slash F sharp. You can always do that. Doesn't have to be written into the song where it says D, you can always use D add nine if you like the sound of that. It's got a nice colorful sound. I think very, very pretty. So your first pattern there, the very, the very last line there of D slash F sharp is thumb, two, thumb, one. Same as the G was, thumb, two, thumb, one. Here's your cluster, you're getting thumb, cluster, thumb, two, thumb, one. I'll do that again. Here's thumb, cluster, thumb, two, thumb, one. And the third one is thumb, two, thumb, one, thumb, three, up high. I love that with the high note in there. So here's number three on the D over F sharp, D slash F sharp. And finally, you got thumb, high string, thumb, one, and then thumb, two, thumb, one. Again, you don't know how that sounds, so you get a rip in, see? So Going back to G. Love it. So there, again, finger picking is in the, the, the beauty is in that blur where you don't, you stop hearing it as patterns because you're throwing in enough variation to kind of trick your listener. Um, and some things, high ones especially carry over that bar line. Um, okay, so that's four different patterns. Now, lots of songs use G, C, and D. Uh, what if you run into an a, e, an e minor, for instance? What if you run into an E minor, what would you do? Okay, well, you already know what to do because E minor has no X's in it. All six strings are available. All six strings are available. Uh, how do I know that? If you look at the chord diagram for an E minor, there's no X's, okay? There's no X's meaning lay off the string. Um, so you'd use the same pattern as a G. So E minor, exactly the same pattern as a G. All the patterns will work. What if you run across an A minor? Well, A minor, there's typically one X in an A minor. If you look at the chord diagram, there's one X in there. So it would take the same pattern as a C, which has one X, right? So all the patterns. Oh yeah. You are equipped to play any, any chord now because they typically have uh, no X's, one X or two X. Very rarely you'll see three X, like specialty items, watch out, but we're talking about standard finger picking here. Um, I'll throw the fabulous Beat Buddy on as a metronome. It is a wonderful thing. It's from Singular Sound, as you well know. I've been working with them for, for quite a while now. I love the Beat Buddy, as you will too. So, so many of you are buying them and we're, we're chatting back and forth as to what pattern and what speed. This is wonderful. Uh, I'm gonna use the Blues One pattern at 80 beats a minute to keep us together as we play along a little bit. And uh, 80 beats a minute, then I'll increase it to one. 20, just so you get a feel for it. Uh, here's the one, two, three. Hey, and um, the Beat Buddy, uh, if you, there's links are in the description below and go grab one from the Singular Sound. If you use the promo code GAW, as in Guitar at Work, GAW10, you get 10% off, helps to support the channel, I appreciate it. It's a ton of fun, way more fun to, than a metronome. So that would be this. That's your, that's your core pattern. 80 beats a minute. That's a G chord. Here's your cluster. And the third one. Fourth one. And now the goal would be to go double speed. That's a double time. Playing 16th notes on this guy. But also bring it up to 120, that's easy. I'm just gonna do this. All I have to do is dial it up 120 beats a minute, and that will be this. Pattern number two. I'll go to a C. I would encourage you to be really, really, um, to really enforce, uh, I'm playing pattern one, pattern two, pattern three, pattern, until you really, really know them. Then you almost have to forget them and they just start, you're just going autopilot. So you may have to label them pattern one, two, three, and four, and be really militant about that until you know each one. If you find one harder than the other, work on the harder one, okay? Really work on the harder one. There's, typically there's benefit to that. So hey, 
Again, head to patreon.com slash guitar at work and grab that sheet. It's really, really handy. There's a ton of other stuff up there too, and we can communicate that way. If you have questions, grab yourself a beat buddy from Singular Sound. And um, hey, we've got lots of finger picking coming your way. And uh, I wanted to re-emphasize that you don't always just learn to finger pick in the context of a song, okay? This is blanket finger picking, really standard. If you get a handle on this, you're gonna be able to experience a lot of songs as what they are, variations upon this, right? So your core thing is that thumb going back and forth. That is the most important thing. It's on the beat typically, back and forth he goes. Hey, so thanks for coming back. Thumbs up mean the world here, and we'll see you all very, very soon. And whoa.